Yeah, well, welcome from my side too. As I'm usually working on cars for 2026, this car is a little bit old for me, but it's still very exciting from technology point of view. It's a great car, and I will show you why I still believe it's super relevant and a, a masterpiece of engineering for today's world. The Hybrid 4 is an all-wheel drive electric car. Also, all-wheel drive is possible in pure electric mode. I will talk about this later. It's a perfect car. Let's see when it jumps. No, yeah. You can drive it zero emission and you can drive it most of the time zero emission. To do your daily jobs, driving to work, going for groceries, sport club, fitness club, swimming club, whatever, bring your kids from A to B. And you can all do this with an electric mode, purely electric, and that's the biggest sense of a plug and hybrid itself. But of course, that's not where it stops. You can, of course, also go for a fun to drive car on highways, on nice curvy roads, whatever you want, high speed, 235, you saw it, it's a non limited vehicle performance that you want. You can drive it the way you want to love to drive it. Of course, not in zero emission range at this time, but uh, then you can get the full power of the 300 horsepower combined performance. And of course, it's always an all-wheel drive. And it drives up to 80 kilometers perfectly in all-wheel drive, also off-road. You see here, uh, that's not really off-road, but it could go off-road if it's out. Uh, that's a Schwarzwald picture again, so you may enjoy streets like this today too. Hopefully a little bit more snow than on the picture. And you can see how good the car handles also in all-wheel drive mode. And of course, the next big important is that this is a car where you never have the fear to miss a charging point and to not continue to drive. Because with a combination of a gas uh, engine and electric two electric motors, you are always prepared to continue to drive. We have, and that's why the end is shown here, of course, we have a service where it's shown where to charge. If you want to continue to electric, it's doable. Uh, but it's not limiting and you never fear to not continue to track it as was fucking hybrid today. We talked about it before, it's a mighty energy platform car. So the architecture from the very first beginning was done in a way that plugins can be easily implemented without compromises. This is what we call the future because as Christopher already said, there is of course an uncertainty about how customers will select their future cars. We want to be C2 compliant, we can shift easily demand and production volumes up and down for all the versions in the same line, on the same frequency, on the same speed. So there's no conversion of a standard car into plug-in hybrid. They are all produced this way. We have these two multiple energy architectures. One is for the Corsair and the smaller C-segment vehicles. So here the Brent X and also the D-sedans. And these segment cars are placed on the EMP2. And EMP2 is currently a plug-in hybrid and gas and diesel architecture. And I will show you a little bit more about the efficiency and the packaging details soon. You'll see the standard combustion engine variant. We have a modern 1.6 turbo, four cylinder cycle engines, a car or an engine that has a lot of uh, winning awards already. You have a new, it's called in this case only the 8 speed 8T, but of course it combines also then the integrated electric motor and a wet clutch for the electric version. You have a full size fuel tank, so the fuel tank range is not compromised. That's a standard uh, combustion uh, engine variant. And then you add all the electric components to make it a plug-in hybrid car. You have in the front an um, 81 kilowatt, 110 horsepower electric car motor integrated into the 8-speed AT gearbox. In the rear, you have a new axle, a multi-link axle with an 83 kilowatt powerful second electric motor. And then, of course, you have your charger, your converter, and you have the battery. And I will come to the details of the components on the plug-in hybrid later soon. What we now show is something that also our dealer gets, because a customer, of course, in the showroom will not see all the technology. And what we do here is a lot of reality demonstration, where you can click through the components at the dealer, and can easily show everyone where the components are placed, and what the added value is, and how, how densely we really enable the packages quite big components into a given C SUV segment car. This is only doable if you plan it from the very first beginning and if your architecture basically enables uh, a multi-energy version that you don't have any downsides on production speed or line sequencing and so on. And this tool, as I said before, is available at the dealers that the customers can really see what they buy and what they get uh, on top of the standard production space. Coming back to the to the individual component, you see here on most versions, you know there's also front wheel drive only version available. There's a slight, slightly smaller horsepower range on the engine, though the engine here on the high four was again pushed to a higher to a higher power. Um, you see here the the electric front motor is always integrated into the front wheel drive and the all-wheel drive variant. 
Um, it has a tendency to call strobe, of course, where it's such generators of standard equipment on the car. You see, but also you see it in the next chart, how we really combined basically in the package, both the, the engine, the HD transmission, are all condensed in one big box to, to help, first of all, the packaging. As, as I said, the car is it's not uh, using more space than the standard one in the front booth. It's not a longer front overhang or whatever. And uh, that's the integration of the system. Also, the inverter, the DCAC inverter, is part of this big one box 88 electric engine and converter that helps us to really enable it. It's eight speed, it shift, has shift pedal, you can try it out. You can manually select your gear uh, and your uh, step over on the, on the gearbox and it has this multi disc wet. Basically, you can phase in and out both electric power and the engine power continuously to, uh, to enable a smooth transaction between pure electric drive and then the uh, gas engine enables additional torque and horsepower on the front. The next component, you see here how densely it is really packed. It's a, it's a new rear axle, a multi-link axle, uh, including here again the motor and the, and the uh, converter. So everything is here in one big package. This is also very good for friction losses. You can get the electric motor directly to the wheels. That's also, if you look carefully into the technical data, the pure electric range of the four-wheel drive slightly higher than that of the front-wheel drive because here you have a, a little bit higher efficiency from the motor to the wheels <laughs> in the rear side. The rear axle is also the standard electric drive for the four-wheel drive. So if you start pure electric on two wheels, you will use the rear axle first for efficiency, and then the, um, if you go to all-wheel drive, or if traction on one, lock, on, uh, one of the wheels needs additional help on the front-wheel drive, then the electric motor front will kick in, and of course then if you want to get the maximum torque and performance, all three engines will be ready. The battery itself, the battery comes from AGCAM, it's, it's a Korean company. We do the own software for the battery management, but the cells itself, so the modules will be managed by the AGCAM software. It's a reliable concept, it's a high density lithium ion battery. What we need to ensure, and that's what I really want to focus on, is it's a water cooled system, and we use the AC performance to cool the water. The biggest issue from batteries is, of course, the fear of the lifetime. The battery must last long. We have huge experiences from the first time here. We have much less batteries coming back to the, to the recycling factory that we saw. So we built a whole center in Rüsselsheim for refurbishment, which is basically not needed. So we know how to treat a battery, which is important. The 80 160,000, we set it first with the Ampere. It's now kind of an industry standard. We know that it works. Others need to prove that their systems are working the same. The battery must be basically pampered in this 35 degrees Celsius. I'm always saying it's a little bit like your own blood pressure or your own body temperature. If you get into fiber area, it's not good for a lithium ion battery too. And also we have to heat it up in winter. So with uh, the cars here the first time, the battery will be heated up, especially during charging to ensure a long lifetime of the battery. If you just charge high speed, cold battery, it's not good for the lifetime. So we know how to handle this since years, since ages. We have also our French colleagues with the learnings we had on Ampera to make sure that this software management is perfectly done in a way that we can really uh, give a long warranty and know that we don't have to pay so much warranty cost because the battery will be flat. Uh, we have these two onboard chargers on the plug-in hybrid depends on your usage needs. You can go to one hour 50. This is the biggest charger, but a lot of customers may not need this at all because they have the pattern charging at home or charging at work or both. Then of course you can wait a little longer and don't have to fully charge in this low, uh, less than two hours. Um, yeah. Coming to, your, to, the, to the useful and the sensefulness of a plug-in hybrid, I think you saw this shortly before. We know that 80% of our customers drive less than 50, 50 kilometers most of the time in their life uh, during their daily commute and work, from work back and so on. So the size of the battery is done in a way that you usually can drive purely electric for most of your standard routine driving work. Maybe not your weekend trip and maybe not your vacation trip, <coughs> but your general everyday routine can be done electric. And only then the plug-in hybrid makes really sense because then you have all these zero emission. <coughs> so we have a fuel size fuel tank. I saw so this. We saw this before. It's important, of course, to ensure that the car is also capable for long distance driving on vacation and you don't have to stop too often. To yeah. Easy charging. For us it's very important. Most of these customers will be first time plug-in hybrid customers. So they are not so experienced with plug-in hybrid system or can it generate with an electric car. And that's why we cannot just sell a car. It doesn't help. We have also to sell a service and leaders must be prepared and knowledgeable about how to guide their customers through the new experience of electric driving. 
and that's a super important. So chargers is of course an email with all insulated free chargers. We have an installation services, so every open here knows exactly to help the customer to get a ball box placed if they want it. Uh, there will be customers who are happy with their standard uh, 220 volt plug-in hybrid uh, system because they still have a time uh, way to charge. But if you want to have fast charging, and if your daily routines uh, need at home to have a, a fast wall box charging, that you can easily charge reliably and fast. Then, of course, our dealers know how to do it. Even more important, of course, on the left, but also on the plug-in, depending on your usage profile, it could be that for you it's essential to charge multiple times uh, if you have a chance to come home to, to recharge during the day. The easiest way, of course, is the standard plug. You may have it in the garage anyway. It's then around tonight. We're always saying our charging system should be done in a way that the customer will always have a chance also on a full electric car to charge overnight uh, to a full charge. Here, of course, easy. You can do it with a 220 volt. If you want to be faster, there are two options depending on the onboard charger. Four hours is a smaller one, but this is the standard. And then uh, the next option is a 0.4 kilowatt charger, which gives you then times around or below two hours for a full charge. And of course, you need dedicated cables for it, that's the standards we have on the European market. Fortunately, now we have standards, and there's no problem to get the right cables on board, depending on if it's so twenty, if it's a green socket, green up socket, or also a charging station, a shopping one, or your wall box, the most convenient one, but also the most expensive one. We have very good prices for this uh, in Croatia, this uh, company is doing chargers. Uh, we did joint development on the charger lineup. You can go to a smart charger or to a less intelligent charger for your building. And when you need on a plug in, I believe a simple solution is good enough. On a fully left, of course, you should think about it twice what you install to make sure that you can get all these nice currency tariffs and all these stuff that helps reducing your electric bill. Yeah. Here again, uh, the public charging works, of course, too, depending on the charger and depending on your cable and equipment on onboard charger. It's again below two hours for for recharge, for recharge, which is not so often needed for the car, but of course good for the environment. So you should think about can you change your behavior in a way that you can continue to drive electric zero emission, or you want to have the convenience of a fast refueling of your standard speed. That's not where it stops. We have also a free to move fact that combines both, first of all, the charging points where you find the next charger. It is charged available and free, also the cost of making of the charger. And if you want, we can also subscribe to a charging service. So you have just one bill independent on where you charge. It comes once a month, so you have a good overview. You don't have to collect these multiple bills from multiple charger companies. So it's all in, in, in one hand. Free to move is the mobility app from Crew PSA for all the brands. That helps you going through all these ways, and you see here the countries listed, so it's an easy way to find your way around charging if you want to charge as often as possible, which should go to be environmental friendly. Now, study here if you don't drive electric car, that's basically the bill you will have if you drive um, 100 kilometers per day, but you can reduce it significantly if you start driving electric, and that's even with. Quite expensive German electricity prices, uh, depending on your country, it may be much uh, different and it may be much better even. So there is also a way to save money, not just to be environmentally friendly, if you drive electric. And if you drive more and more electricity, and use more and more electricity, of course, so the wind is bigger and bigger. So it's really a time also to think about how fast you can get the on cost back from the vehicle if you do it as a private customer and not just as a company car or an incentive customer. Now the next step, of course, is we have motivations for customers changing. Here, especially the fleet customers, uh, the company car customers, who get a better benefit in kind. So it's a uh, uh, much better deal to try the black and hybrid than to try the uh, gas or diesel variant. Yeah, especially in Germany, but from country to country, there are also there are always incentives to make a move from a conventional car to electrified vehicle. So that's the second step where it really helps you to save money, even if the car, of course, is more expensive than you buy it. Four modes, you hopefully will experience all four during your drive sessions. Uh, the car starts always electric, but you have a hybrid mode if you want to uh, ensure that it's uh, close to the hybrid. The all wheel drive, in case you need it for muddy weather, the system will detect it anyway and switch to all wheel drive. But if you want to be safe and start the car, you can also go there. And sport is maximum full power, always available. Of course, not the most environmental friendly one. But it's important the B function, and uh, I just want to tell you, I was told you. To tell you again that it's you have to really it's a copper shifter, you have to pull it towards you, then you're changing from B and B. The cluster will show you when you're driving in. B is a stronger recuperation, so the car will break itself and regenerate energy. 
also for both motors on the all-wheel drive. That's also a reason why in the WLTP the range of the um, all-wheel drive version is longer than electric range and the one on the um, front-wheel drive version only because you have a double regeneration of energy to the both motors getting basically electricity back into the battery. So take take your time, pull it. You see it on the cluster that you're going from to B. Make, make up yourself what you like. The D driving mode is like an automatic transmission, you know. You're basically rolling if you go from the gas pedal. With the B mode, the car is braking. So usually, if you don't have an emergency braking, you can brake the car just by releasing the, the, the pedal. It's not a one pedal, it doesn't go to stop. We believe this one pedal driving modes are from the transition from a standard car to an electric or plug in hybrid car. Mostly too aggressive for most of the customers because you have the nervous way to control your gas pedal. This is a softer version, and so we believe is an optimum compromise between regeneration and, mm -hmm. and uh, ease of, of driving. Make your sandy mic, so I think it's perfectly done. So you have a smooth way to really work only with the gas pedal without having the sensation to be overly concentrated and not braking too fast. Yeah. The modes again, electric zero emission mode, that's how the car starts usually. If you don't select another one, that's how you start always. It electrifies the motor. You start with the rear motor on the forward, uh, on the all-wheel drive. Of course, the front-wheel drive will start with the, uh, with the front motor. It has no rear axle. Um, and then, of course, it, it edits the front e drive. Uh, you can go up to 135 kilometers an hour purely electric for the range you have. If you're driving very dynamic, you experience the range is not as good. Uh, you can go to 59 kilometers, of course, and then the combustion engine kicks in early. Uh, you see here a zero emission blue LED. That's a signal. Also, to the outside world, we are driving from electric. There is currently no regulation that we have to do this. I guess when we will have the first city saying only zero emission, that the car needs to demonstrate it's driving in zero emissions. And this is the first step. If it's really the legal, legally allowed or not, we don't know yet, but the car is prepared for a future where we really have to show that you're driving for a plug in hybrid in zero emission mode. If you go to hybrid, of course, it's always the combustion engine is in, the two will go out. Uh, the hybrid mode is a good balance between uh, uh, for your daily routine, so it tries to reserve electric range when electric driving is very efficient. It will use the combustion engine earlier, uh, as, as soon as it sees that's a better catch for your overall profile. It's a learning algorithm behind, which then will see according to your uh, driving profile how, how the best way for you to get a maximum out of the electric range. And the all-wheel drive, of course, it, uh, it's not the eco-friendliest way to do, but in your driving situation, if you have high snow, mud, or whatever, it's a way to select it manually. So before the car will go into all-wheel drive if needed, but so we can make sure that it's, it's that this way. And the sport mode is really for enjoying the full power uh, of the system. And C and force power combined uh, performance, of course, that sets a number. It's really fun to drive. You will experience yourself for you today, too. Um, so that's, a, it's an, that's an interesting feature. You can preserve an electric range. So you can have a chance to say, I know that I have to drive still in a city with the next 10 or 15 kilometers and I want to drive purely electric. It could be that legislations will allow you only to drive pure electric in some cities. And you can say, for me, that's the range I want to reserve. So the car starts going into combustion engine mode earlier, keeps this electric range available, and you switch maybe the electric range on if you need it and you come into a zero emission zone. It's not yet in, in all of countries uh, required here, but if it comes, you can then go into zero emission zones in cities. It may happen uh, sooner than we believe today, and more and more cities will start uh, doing this. Yeah. Next one is economy, power and economy, of course. Uh, we want to make sure that this car is still a sporty car. It's a uh, power range. You see, combined three and four powers is a good variant. If you compare, compare to the standard combustion engine, we already have, even the car is heavier, but we have more horsepower. It already has a better ratio than the standard one. If you go to the all-wheel drive, it's even more impressive. We get to the 6.3 mass versus horsepower range. And that's more than, yeah, that's more than some of the premium SUVs you see today on the market. So it's a good, good number, um, high horsepower for a not too heavy car. Interior side, if you know the grand plan, you're at home immediately, there's no big change. We don't believe it's time to collect leaves or to make a green big bubble and back. I don't believe this gaming, what we call gamification on the industry, is right for customers. There may be customers who love it, but a standard customer will want to feel at home and easily to operate with the car. 
You see here, there's also a screen for recuperation, you can monitor it. I guess that most of our customers will very soon not look at this anymore because they just love to drive their car, and the car handles everything for themselves. We have some, some slides, some slides of course, uh, done for the electric version, so you see exactly where your energy bill is going to. But I doubt that customers want to have a special experience. They want to drive a car, they want to, as they used to drive a car, and they want to be happy that this car has zero emission most of the time during their, during their year. Of course, the car has all the things we know <coughs> from the Grand Land and the Open Grand Stand 4, flex folding rear seats, high boost capacity. The boost itself has the same floor height and the same configuration as the standard Grand Land X, so there's no higher step or whatever. But if you look at the technical data, so you'll figure out that, of course, there's a spare wheel outlet uh, place as we have the rear axle now. You saw this rear axle, it's not nothing, it's still big with the, with the electric motor. Uh, the, the reduction here and everything. So there is some space deficits below the floor, but this floor height is exactly the same as on the standard car. A lot of competitors have to move the floor up to get the extra uh, electronics or devices in the pool. You do this. Not for the battery, not for the reaction. So even the, the Pop has four has the same pool space. Smart telematics, of course, uh, they are recently known. Uh, we added here some smart uh, connectivity portions for the Hyper 4. So besides the standard services and merchant account, as you know, and park and travel, we, we add con step by step, we added, I'm not sure if it already released before. So you can find, you can even buy parking tickets over the app or over the connectivity. And for the outdoors, in some cases, we must now we have live navigation. But we have also trip and drive management and fleet management tools so you can really easier handle your trips and also the fleet. Uh, for feed owners, you can really go into uh, all the data between your feed vehicles and collect them. So there's a couple of services so we can on this car. It's a little replacing the uh, overall stand uh, with, without the concierge service, better price points, better services, and for most of the customers, everything they really need. On top of this, we have the, the open app for remote control. It's a standard remote that you are used to, like opening the car, on or flashing to find the car, and so on. But, of course, we have here added for plug-in, and we added this also for the best, of course, charging management. You can define when you charge your car, so you can plug in, but you start charging only when your price for electricity goes down during the night, which is, of course, your sufficient. So you don't have to wake up again and try to find the right point to, to charge the car and handle it automatically. And maybe even more important, as you know, especially in winter driving, the range will go down dramatically because heating takes so much electricity on a, if you're driving pure electric, the electric range. So you can precondition your car when it's still plugged in. So you get into a warm car, it's like a parking heater for free. And it also helps you to keep your maximum electric range because uh, keeping the temperature in the car, of course, consumes much less energy than heating up of the car that was cooled down during that. So that's a, a way again to, to change it. And it works also with the air conditioning in summer, which is very nice. If you program it via your smartphone, you can, you can come to cars that is cooled on already or heated up already. It's a nice comfort feature. On top of that, of course, we have after sale services, which is important also for you as the owner of a car. If you want to resell the car, you have battery management and assistance system that the dealer knows the state of the battery. It's a good uh, helping point for high residual values of the car, as we don't have the risk that the battery is not in good shape anymore. Uh, as I said before, we are very proud of the experience. We had this line with some lithium ion batteries since it's long, long time in that era. We believe we have a competitive advantage there, and it's also good to prove that our batteries will be in good state if you resell the car. Uh, it's good to know that we have a chance to tell the dealer or the customer for a used car, used car buyer, uh, the sale of the battery. So I think it's an important issue for, for the success of this customer. Yeah, that's the end of my presentation. All in all, it's a great package. We don't stop with just producing a car. We try to really guide the customer and the dealer to make sure that every question and answer is answered. We have telematic and smartphone services around the car to ensure that you can easily use it and easily use the features. We try to bring this car as close as possible to the standard car so you don't have to learn or train or do something. You can just start driving it. But for any question you may have for charging or for installation at home, now we have you covered, and the dealers know how to help you. And here, this is I hand over again to Christopher, and I think he will talk about the tour today and the next steps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.